I'm going to mention an aspect of media which I've been working on a good deal lately. And I have a preface to a new book which begins, All of Man's Artifacts of Language, of Laws, of Ideas, Hypotheses, Tools, Clothing, Computers, all of these are extensions of our physical bodies. Hans Haas, in The Human Animal, sees this human power to create additional organs as an enormity from the evolutionary standpoint, an advance laden with unfathomable consequences. The laws of the media are observations on the operation and effects of human artifacts on man and society, since, as Hans Haas further notes, a human artifact is not merely an implement for working upon something, but an extension of our body effected by artificial additional organs, to which, to a greater or lesser degree, we owe our civilization. One thing overlooked by Hans Haas is the absence of biological or psychological means of coping with the effects of our own technical ingenuity in creating new organs. The problem is clearly indicated in some simians in man's presumptuous brain when he says that when, about half a million years ago, man began slowly to embark upon the road to cultural advance, an entirely new situation arose. The use of implements and the control of fire introduced artifacts of which the cortex could be avail itself for purposes of living. These artifacts had no relationship whatever to the organization of the body and could therefore not be integrated into the functioning of the brainstem. What Simeons is saying is that our natural responses to media and to technology are irrelevant, that we cannot trust our instincts or our natural physical responses to new things. They will destroy us. How are we to uh, uh, bypass or offset the merely physical response to new technology and new environments created by new technologies. This problem has not been raised by anybody, except that we have to live with it every day. Edgar Allan Poe has a story called The Descent into the Maelstrom, which had tremendous influence in the 19th century on the poets uh, and symbolists like Baudelaire and Flaubert and others. In The Descent into the Maelstrom, Poe imagines the situation in which a sailor who has gone out on a fishing expedition is caught by not watching the turn of the tide in a huge maelstrom or whirlpool, and he sees that his boat will be sucked down into this thing. He begins to study the action of the strom, he observes that some things disappear and some things reappear. By studying the things that reappear, to which he, uh, to, uh, he attaches himself to one of these, he saves himself. Pattern recognition in the midst of a huge, overwhelming, destructive force is the way out of the maelstrom. The huge vortices of energy created by our media present us with similar possibilities of evasion, of consequences, of destruction. By studying the pattern of the effects of this huge vortex of energy that in which we're involved, it may be possible to program a strategy of evasion and survival. The survival cannot be trusted to natural response or natural instinct since the brain stem is not provided with any means of responding to man-made environments. I'm going to read a passage from Anthony Storr in The Human Aggression, in which he observes, it is obviously true that most bomber pilots are no better, no worse than other men. The majority of them, given a can of petrol and told to pour it over a child of three and ignite it, would probably disobey the order. Yet put a decent man in an aeroplane a few hundred feet above a village, and he will kill without compunction, drop high explosives, inflict appalling pain and injury on men, women, and children. The distance between him and the people he is bombing make them into an impersonal target, no longer human beings like himself with whom he can identify. This is characteristic situation. That bomber pilot is really very much like the person introducing any new technology are using ordinary human business resources and a existing institutional means. None of these people ever consider what will be the impact or the effect of what they do when they pull that trigger. 
Quite apart from the use of weaponry at a distance, there is the effect of changes in man himself which result from using his own devices to create environments of service. Any new service environment such as that created by railways or motor cars or telegraph or radio deeply modify the very nature and image of the people who use them. Radical changes of identity happening in very sudden brief intervals of time have proved more deadly and destructive to, to human values than were wars fought with hardware weapons. In the electric age, the alternative alteration of human identity by new service environments of information have left whole populations without personal or community values to a degree that far exceeds the effects of food and fuel and energy shortages. It is hoped that many improvements on this approach will be suggested by the readers of this book. Meantime, I suggest it possible to begin by noticing a. What does the artifact amplify or enhance in the case of any new form uh, of medium or technology? A. What does it enhance? B. What does it obsolesce? And third, what does it bring back from a distant past that was unexpectedly scrapped earlier? And finally, what does it flip into when pushed to the full limit of its power? I'm going to, I'll give you a few examples of this pattern of uh, these four phases or stages in the development of any artifact, whatever. I just have in front of me, in isolation from other things, camera. A, it enhances by its snapshotting aggression and private power over people. B, it obsolesces privacy. It retrieves the past as present. It brings back the big game hunter. Bringing him home alive means bringing people home alive. Photographic journalism is very big game hunting. It flips into the public domain. The clock amplifies work. Until clock, what we call work was almost impossible to organize. It obsolesces leisure. It retrieves history as art form by fixed chronology, a measurable sequential chronology capable of visual time as measured by the clock. It reverses when pushed all the way into the eternal present. Anonymous. Electric media in general amplify information range, scope, pushing information into a service environment by simultaneity, obsolesces the visual, the connected, the logical, the rational, retrieves the subliminal, audile, tactile dialogue involvement, brings back, rather, reverses, finally, all hardware into software.